In this video, I'm going to show you my dream gaming table that I built. First off, i got to give a big thank you to Andy at Blackjack Legacy. Uh, I saw his uh, gaming table video uh, a couple years ago, and that was one of the big pieces of building this table um, that, that I was really kind of bringing together. I looked at a bunch of other gaming tables, and um, the whole idea of having rails with accessories that can clip in there, um, and just ways to make this table help a variety of games flow. Um, but when I saw his tab uh, the table that he built that had leaves that could hinge up and fold down so you could just have one or two up for a smaller game or put all three up for a full Warhammer game or play a big D&D &D game is what I was kind of thinking with that too. Um, that, was, that was the design in my mind. That really brought it together. But also because both of those leaves can fold down and if the whole thing's on casters I made it so that it can it can get through a door. So I don't have to be stuck here in the gaming room, it can be stored in here, and then it's really easy to put, a, put the leaves down, roll it out into the, the living room if we had a bigger um, family game night or something, and it can come back in, it's not, it's, it's not stuck. I didn't want to have to assemble like the legs for a solid piece and just have a really, really big table kind of in the way, so that checked a lot of boxes and I gotta really thank him for that. I'm gonna put a link uh, in the description of the video so you can check out that um, that build that he did. And the other thing that I really need to say is um, obviously like uh, woodworking is a big hobby of mine. I've been at it for a little bit now and I've built up uh, you know, a good collection of tools to be able to tackle a project like this. Like I did this all in solid walnut so um, you know, for people that are a little more familiar with woodworking, um, I'm going to go over some of the design elements for, for the table that I think really worked well, some things that I really like that, that uh, like I said, kind of help games uh, run a little smoother or help me as either a DM or a player for games. Um, but really check out his video too if you want a little bit, uh, uh, not simpler design, but uh, just something that's a little bit easier to tackle if you have a limited uh, tool selection or access to woodworking tools. Um, it's a really solid table that he put together and it's something that I think anybody can kind of tackle so I think that's an awesome thing um, if you hey, if you watch both of the videos too you could come up with your own your own design that has uh, some of these elements with it too it wouldn't be hard to make this rail system and just fix it onto the edge of any table that you're building it doesn't have to be exactly like this um, but even if you're kind of making a little bit more a simpler table or if you have a little bit more limited access to tools and whatnot You can still take some of these Concepts and put them on kind of any table. So I hope it like uh, just like his video inspired me I hope this video can inspire you and uh, it helps you make a, a great gaming table to share with family and friends um, So let's get into it Starting out with a truckload of rough cut walnut here we go consulting with the apprentice here. This one, one of the slabs is coming together, one of the panels. I call them slabs, they felt, they weighed like a slab, so I call them slabs. <laughs> Smoothing it out, a lot of sanding. Marking out some mortise and tenon. This one had a lot of um, big mortise and tenon joints, all the legs and the middle posts in between. So there were six mortise and tenon joints in the panel below and six in the one above. A little help from The Apprentice. Test fit the mortise and tenon. It's kind of a relief to see it looking good. <laughs> Might not really have been that crazy, but it was such a big piece. Like that's four foot, that cube is uh, four foot long, two foot wide, like 
30 some inches tall. It's just a, a beast. It's a profu uh, profile view of the rails. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the dimensions that I use for those in, later on in the video, just so people can replicate them if they want. so that walnut doesn't fade. I just dyed it a walnut color as close to the uh, normal colors I could. It looks really dark when it first goes on, but it really lightens up when that dye dries and it's something that hopefully kind of protects it for years to come. It looks pretty though. Boy, does it look pretty. <laughs> snapping some pictures uh, while I was putting this together. Literally the, the last coat of polyurethane dried was done curing on a Saturday morning and this is me that Saturday afternoon um, putting it together doing the final like hardware assembly stuff and uh, just later later that Saturday night we had another family uh, kind of games with us they came over for like a little family and family game night and uh, the table was like just a couple hours finished and then we got to play on it so that was kind of fun that came worked out just in time <laughs> those are like gate hinges that I used um, I doubled up on them really like two of them or what would hold up like huge shed doors um, so I figured four of them four of them was something like, like I think could hold like 400 pounds for these uh, shed doors, so I figured four of them for these uh, 30 pound uh, leaf panels that fold down just kind of helped me sleep at night to over engineer that. so proud of this table. I think it's a beautiful piece of furniture, but what makes it truly special in my mind is when I think about it as a family heirloom and all the times that I'm going to sit down at this table and share laughs and make memories and play games with family and friends. I can't wait for my kids to grow up so I can show them the games that I love to play on this table and I'm really looking forward to learning what games they're going to introduce me to. When the table was really coming together, Ben asked me how I was going to sign it. I hadn't even really given that a thought, but he told me it was becoming a work of art and that as a craftsman I should really consider signing it. So I had a plaque made to commemorate our work. Thanks for your help with this build, Ben. I think it came out great and I'm really looking forward to all the games we'll play on this table.
I anticipate one of the things that people will be most curious about is the rail and accessories system. I thought I wanted to kind of show from the profile here a little bit, a little bit more about how that works. The T-slot there is a, a quarter of an inch. It's a quarter of an inch opening. It's like dead on a quarter of an inch. The depth is, uh, it's like five sixteenths. It's just a little over a quarter of an inch and the the width which is kind of up and down in this orientation is like a sixteenth over one inch so technically it's a quarter a quarter and a full inch uh, but they gave a little bit of a sixteenth of an inch play in those areas and that really helps because that's what allows the clearance for this to kind of slot in as it's moving the most important thing uh, is to get right what I found from a lot of trial and error is that this width the width of that uh, that little lip that's on the outside so it's going to rest against needs to be just exactly I have a quarter I did this with a quarter inch bit so the thickness of that bit was exactly a quarter of an inch this either needs to be bang on a quarter of an inch or just a hair shy of it the, the more shot if it's too if it's bigger than a quarter of an inch this it won't fit it won't work um, if it's a little bit under the further you go under a quarter of an inch the more that when this slots in the more it will droop hanging down to the side so what I do is I, I got that set up that depth of that to be right on a quarter of an inch and I use that same quarter of an inch little marking gauge to to set up the the fence for at the router table. So I have a quarter inch bit that's set exactly a quarter of an inch. The very edge of it is a quarter of an inch off of the off of the fence. So there's a quarter of an inch of space, and then there's the quarter of an inch bit. And what I did was I ran it through this way and I flipped it upside down and ran it right through again. And what that does for you is the inside of one of those edges is going to hit the top and the other side uh, is going to hit this outside here. So it's going to give you a little bit of an S where those contact points are. And once you have those exactly right, what I did was I just took a little bit of extra out here so that it has some play. It's going to have to have some room there if it tilts up, if it was exactly right on it would be wedged in there and there would be no space for this to tilt up a little bit. And then I just routed out the rest of what would be left over here where this rounded bit is. I routed all the rest of that out and then take it off at a 45 and then I just kept sanding until I had just the right clearance. Now the more that you come off of this, the more you clear out on this top, the easier it's going to be to lift this up and get it out of the way. And the more that you round over this bottom here the easier that's going to be. What, what I liked was to try to get it kind of snug because then if, it, if there's a little bump and there's not too much play here it'll actually pinch against that top and push uh, push this curved bit down into the into the wood and stop it. So I'm, I'm imagining if someone's at the table and they get up or their knee kind of bumps something there's a little bit of uh, a catch to it not it's not you can you can blow past it but for little bumps and stuff like that i thought that would be kind of helpful so that's how i set up mine um, but i just wanted to show people that so that if you were going to try to recreate this um, you could do something like that at, at home 
these top bits here for the cards are just the thickness of the table saw blade. So I just ran it through, kept moving it over a quarter of an inch. Um, it works out to be a little bit of a design kind of element. Looks good, I think. But that's what holds the cards. And for the table here, I have I routed um, a three-quarter inch little chunk, and it just kind of helps the seat on it a little bit better. It help it'll help keep anything from warping a little bit over time if the wood moves a little bit. Um, and then what I did was just when I when it came time to put this on, I did the final thing. I finished these pieces separately, and we just screwed right in here. So if you were going to do this to a table, you don't have to do it all in hardwood like this or anything, but if you wanted to make a little rail system like that, um, yeah, just like I say, you know, those dimensions kind of follow. That's what I kind of did. You can tinker with them if, if you know, you've got a little bit different dimensions, but that way, uh, that worked out for me with this being a, a three quarter inch uh, piece of wood. So those dimensions will work kind of perfectly for it. Um, and then you could just, you don't have to have that if you didn't want it but where, where however you wanted to fit it on a table you know you could just screw that in after you were done making a table so there you go just wanted to kind of reiterate that or show that in a little bit better detail for you guys I kind of feel like I have this vision of something like a heads-up display for playing D&D, running your character, um, kind of having your character sheet there in front of you visually and in intuitively in a way that kind of helps you or helps the game flow. And I tried to try out a lot of things I was thinking about with these um, gaming desks. So this would be kind of more for the RPG side of things, um, which is what most uh, well, I get to play most often. Um, I have a little 3x3 three three grid for nine levels of spell slots. I think you could do this whatever way makes the most sense to you, but I, in my mind I'm always thinking almost like a like a keypad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if you have four spell slots and for level one, three for two, you have like one left for level three and two left for level four. Uh, this is just a nice way if you're, especially if you're a spellcaster, if you're one of the major spellcaster classes, um, it's nice to know where you're at in the scheme of things with all of your different levels of spell slots instead of having to leaf through pages or keeping it, keeping it down on a, like a little note card or something. And then you just easily tick down when you burn a slot or bump them back up if you rest or if you get them back. Um, and that kind of, uh, for me, it kind of helps me know, um, helps direct me if I'm wondering about well, what spell to use over another, if I kind of go, well, I don't really have that many of that slot level left. It just helps you think, I think, uh, on the fly a little quicker. Um, so that's what I'm intending that section to be, but if, if players have a different system, I, it doesn't bug me at all, I just hope it's helpful. And I have three slots in here, and three slots running all along the, the board, or the table. Um, I think these kind of look good as like a design element, but they're meant to be practical too. So, I bet a lot of people find um, the cards as handy as I do, <laughs> me and my players do. And, I don't know, you could do it a bunch of different ways. You could do... Um, some items, if you're always forgetting to use items, you could either you have the get the item cards or you could jot them down, on, like cut a little 3x5 in half and just jot it down there. And that way you could have them, have them up here. Oh, these are my good items that I, I, I know I need to use next time we're in combat. They're really helpful or, or I always forget them when we're doing a social encounter or something. You could keep them up there. You could, you could keep them down here. Whatever is easy, but... Um, I'm kind of thinking too, if you have uh, some go-to spells that you really like to use, or if you want to keep them kind of organized, hey, my back row is some of my damage dealing spells that I like to use. Um, these front rows are some of my, my utilities, and you can kind of quickly look through them and pick, you know, whichever one you're going to cast if you need to reference some information. But I think having 
all of those rows, you know, it's not too hard to reach over it and see the table, but they're all kind of up right in front of you. You're not leafing through a deck in your hands and that kind of thing. Um, the other thought that I have for this, you certainly could keep, oops, you certainly could keep your, just your set of dice in here, but I don't know if that's particularly helpful. I don't know if that really helps the game. What I, what I thought, this would really depend on the type of game that you're running, uh, would be to have your pool of hit dice. So if you had D8s and you had uh, seven hit dice, either left or that's what you're starting out with, you could leave that pool here and when your party says, hey, we're going to take a short rest, you can, you visually, without having to count or without having to do any math in your head, you can see kind of where you're at um, with your health and what you have as a resource to use. Um, and if you, if you did go with that, if you played a game where you were maybe doing a couple of short rests during your sessions, um, then it would be really handy to kind of know where you're, where you're at. Um, without having to leaf through the paper. It's kind of there right in front of you. And I think this also is a nice cue. Like I say, it's like a heads-up display is what I'm intending it to be. It's a nice cue to remind you if you are if you get to a point in your game, if it's um, a short rest or a long rest or whatever, this is a nice cue to me to say, hey, you can get those back if you <laughs> can get to a good point to take a rest with the party. Um, you certainly could use those in a few different ways. That's just uh, the one that I think for RPG games. Um, I think you could you could also keep a a pool of if you were playing Warhammer or some uh, um, the way that they do uh, command points now. Um, you could keep your dice. If you have, let's say you had five command points here, you could have five dice right there and you know, hey, I'm going to burn that on a reroll or, or I'm going to spend two of them for that stratagem or whatever. Um, so you could keep a little pool of them right there too. Um, or you could keep, you could use other die to keep track of your victory points. You know, yours in the left and your opponent's in the right or whatever. Or if you get those ones where you roll, you get D3, you could keep track of whether it was one, two, or three points for that. Um, I think there's a couple, or hopefully, I mean, there's multiple ways to use this, but those are some of the ones I was thinking of when I designed it. And I also think you can use for like Warhammer, Kill Team, all those, a lot of games you use cards for. You could keep your tactical objectives right there, right handy. You don't have to have them off to a side table. Um, if you're playing this way, you could easily switch them so they're not directly in front of you, but you can reference them really easy, look to the side while you're thinking about what moves you want to make with your units. Um, the whole idea with this was that it's not a, that it's as universal as possible, that it's not too limited to just one type of game. Um, I think if you played something like Catan too, you could organize your resources in front of you in these slots so that you kind of have a quick um, knowledge of what, you know, how many of each resource you have or what you need to trade for, that kind of thing. Um, and there's a little spot down here for the, the player's handbook, I'm thinking, for uh, for D&D, but you could easily keep your, your codex for Warhammer down there um, or whatever rules book, you know, that you're playing if you have a little reference sheet or something, so... Um, there you go. I just want to show kind of some of the ideas that I had with that. And again, um, I, I just have this dream. I have this vision of having a, like a heads up display where it's like physical representations that are really intuitive. They're visual. They do the tracking for you visually. You don't have to keep a bunch of things on paper. Some elements you would have to do on paper or reference your, your, your skills. You know, you'd keep that on your character sheet and just pull it out and check them before you make a roll. But for some of those things that you use all the time, um, I think I think this could really help speed the game along, and I, I think you could keep too if you had uh, if you had a certain attack that you use frequently, or if you had sneak attack, keep all your sneak attack dice there. You could use it for that purpose too. 
where every time, okay, my sneak attack went off, I, I just scoop these up and I get to add those on. Um, or if you have a special, you know, if you have your, so you use a, a mall and you have like a, or you use a, you have divine favor on or something. Um, you could keep that D4. Oh, why don't I have a D4? You can keep that, or if you are a ranger and have hunter's mark, whatever things that you have on that you consistently kind of use this tactic to have a bunch of dice instead of hunting for them or having them off to side or whatever. You can just have your handful of dice that you typically use, sneak attack or whatever buffs, and you just know when you hit and you're going to use that, that you just scoop up that handful of dice and use them. Now I'm planning on making uh, some small little just dice uh, trays so you could have another little tray here um, for your hit point keep your hit points here do the sneak attack bunch here and um, I'm gonna be making those so I hope those are kind of helpful too but we'll find out if you like this video we'd love your support uh, subscribing or liking the video is a big help to us and then if you choose to do that man we really appreciate it um, this is the table that I'm going to be running the, the rest of the D&D &D campaign on. So the first uh, season that we've kind of recorded, I'm still working through editing videos and putting those up. But uh, starting with the second season we're going into, all of it's going to be on this table. So if you want to see more of this table in action, um, stick with us and hopefully you find it funny. We have a blast uh, playing on it. So hope you stick around. Thanks. Oh, 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 shit! Oh wow! Oh what? Oh! Oh come on! Oh, it's so good. That's so good. Oh, well, oh, Colonel, this looks good. You're gonna have to start selling them. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. There's dude, no wow. time to waste. I don't have the time. <laughs> I don't know it looks how it so took. good. It took a while, but. Oh, and the oh, scenes really worked nice. great. I I think that's, I can. I think. I can it's, yeah. it's just one of those yeah, so pretty. Pretty. classy. That's cool. So nice. Good idea. Now we're on a track. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. I like your tracks. Yeah, well, yes. I don't know. Hold up. I don't know if it's locked. What? No. I'm just kidding. Oh, they, oh. they sound so good even oh. opening this. Oh, That's man. legit. Yeah. yeah. And they're soft. Clothes. I tried. Yeah. I, tried. I worked cool. really hard on this thing. Oh, yeah. So they cool. tip here. Oh, you know, don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. This is incredible. This is incredible. Dude. I feel, yeah, I feel sweet. Like, I feel so, so good. sweet getting this thing done, though. It is so well, good. That one, I, so I think good. I'm having trouble. I don't know if it's this rail or that right, one. Listen, I'm going to just back out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to back out of here. I think <laughs> Pull out. The crazy thing is, and I get that you did research, but mm -hmm. it's, it is, this is still your first run. Yeah, this was. <laughs> does that make sense? This is your first time ever making sense? a table table. You did research, but yeah, but it's like, this is, working with just, wood. Listen, I you just bought sat, tools. Oh, I sat in this chair, I watched YouTube videos, and I just meditated until <laughs> I knew the time was right. No. You're like, this is going to be good. You're right, though, but I'll say this. It's impressive. Every cut, every technical. Your finger's in the picture. Sorry, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Every, every technical <laughs> cut that I did. Shut up, I'm taking a silent picture. <laughs> every technical cut that I did with yeah. this, it's not the first time I've done that. Just like on the cast, which is cool, and this won't, you know, won't actually. Go anywhere. Can I give one more shot with the with the with it down? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No problem. Sorry. No problem, sorry. boss. Sorry. Oh! Sorry. 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 Shoulder. I need surgery. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Come here, you. Everybody make your intelligence rolls. Yep. I I was not gonna get that on my head. <laughs> I was I was lost hundred percent. So okay, but this needs to be like beside us, right? Uh wherever you want. If I you want it off to the side, I'm gonna have mine to, to cool. the front of me oh, because I, I'm so excited about this. The cool thing is I, I have not made that decision for you. You can put it wherever you like. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We're playing D&D now. Uh, we are we officially playing D&D. That's a phone holder. Oh, no, wait. Just a this is not nice. This is nice. Is that is it I feel official right here. I know, right?
The only Fancy thing I can stuff. see is not the. Oh well, no, you can reach. Oh, there. You can reach. Or the DM can reach. Whatever you want to do. There we go. This is, that is good. Yep, it was good. Oh, so steady. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. This is this is the dream, man. This is the dream. Oh. oh what are these for? Christening this at the same time. <laughs> oh crap! <laughs> 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 Sorry. Guys, guys, we're 20, I got the two. 19, 18, 18, 18, 18. <laughs> <laughs> And the table. It's we're not a crit fail. So, yeah. We're okay. Uh, there you go. It's keeping you from, yeah. Yeah, we've, we've got a high average here. Oh, I brought a wig. Really <laughs> <laughs> we all failed in this